basically an ISU-152 with a longer 130 gun. It's a smaller caliber, but boy does this thing pack a decent punch. Damage-wise, you're looking at 460. Rate of fire is just shy of 6.5 rounds a minute. Penetration is 257. The armor, pretty pants. Speed is not too bad, and the rotation is pretty good. Also, when we look at the detailed stats, well, it shows a different picture. Hit points, it's got 1,010. Main armor, as you can see, not that great, but it's okay. View range, 266 meters. Camouflage values, that's just above average. DPM, 2,903. Reload time, just shy of, just over 9.5 seconds. Penetration-wise, AP, you'll knock out 257. APC, um, premium, you'll knock 226. HE, 72. Damage-wise, you're knocking out 460 on your AP, 530 on your premium AP, and 600 on your HE. Aim time, 3.2 seconds. Depression, a measly 6 degrees. Traverse, left is 2 degrees, and to the right is 10 degrees. Top speed, why well, are you going to need push 43 with an average speed of 29? So, the big question is, is it a 152 in disguise? Our short answer to that is no. As you can see here, we have the 152 on the left. DPM, penetration and alpha are all worse in this tank. Rate of fire and reload time, however, is much better. Caliber is obviously different. It's 130mm, not 152. Shell velocity is slightly worse, knocking out at 870. Aim time and dispersion, however, are lots better. Depression is the same, 6 degrees, and the elevation is slightly worse at 13 degrees. Aiming arc, well, on the right it's 10 degrees, but on the left it's only 2, so that's like a big variant. Moving down, we've then, I'm not going to go through the engines and the power ratios. The camo values are the interesting ones. When you are stationary, you can see here the camo values are slightly better. Credit co efficiency, you got 170% on this one compared to 96 on the 152. But the hull armor is worse. When I then switch it and have a look at these penetration values, on your standard AP with all the same equipment and everything loaded, you can see it's a lot lower from the 152. The rate of fire and the reload stays the same, and your your pen values and alpha values are significantly worse. On your APCR, again, the DPM shoots up. Penetration and alpha is reduced quite a lot. And that's the trick with this tank. Whilst it's a nice tank, it is not in a, it, the same as the 152. Your, your damage output is a lot less, but your DPM is a lot more because of that reload time. Now, when I stick a chi in, then you'll see the big difference between the two tanks. So you're knocking out 960 on the SU-152. You're only knocking out 600 on the 130. The penetration values are significantly different. Penetration is 90 on the 152, 65 on the 130. And the DPM is a lot, lot lower. And that's the biggie, because the 152 on its HE is a formidable gun so it is not a 152 in disguise let's have a look at this armor as you can see it's pretty similar skin wise to the 152 i mean it's the same chassis basically the only difference being it's a bigger gun so when you stick it into this i mean you're going to be penned all over the place so why should you even think about getting this tank well firstly let's have a look at the cost at the moment this is in the store in two packages if you just want the tank, you'll get the tank, a garage slot, and the King Cobra Epic Avatar 
for 7,500 gold, which for a tier 8 TD isn't that bad. If you want to spend 10,500, however, you will get this tank and the ISU-122S, a tier 7 TD, both with garage slots. Nine equipment slots unlocked for both vehicles. Forest Shadow Rare Camouflage for the 130. And of course you get the King Cobra Legendary Avatar. And that goes for 10,500 gold. So for an extra 3,000 gold, you're getting two tanks, which isn't that bad, to be honest with you. Now, when you look at the bundles themselves, if you've already got the 130, War Game will give you back 2.9 million credits for the 130, and they'll give you back 1.9 million credits for the 122S. So, it's not a bad package. But the question is, why would you want this tank if you've already got the 152? Is this tank worth it? Well, the 152, as we all know, is a standard tech tree tank. I mean, you get that tank for free. It's a free tank. Whereas this, you've got to spend gold. And as we've seen in tank compare, it's got lower output damage wise and penetration and um, then the the 152 but the reload time is much much better so what you lose per shell you actually gain because of the reload oh both have got pants armor which is hardly surprising it's a td um and the biggest difference is the 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 rate of alpha that this thing dishes out compared to its bigger brother with the 152. Now this tank actually is a real tank. The Russians did actually build this tank. Um, it was never used but they did build it and there's a surviving example in Kubinka. But that doesn't tell you why you should buy the tank. I actually like this tank. I prefer it to the 152 funnily enough mainly because I think this tank is more versatile than the 152. And the reason I say it's more versatile is because the reload time and the amount of shells you can get per minute out of this thing makes it personally more formidable than the 152. In the 152 you've got to wait that 12 seconds for the shell to load where in this thing you're waiting 9 seconds. That's a significant difference you can put this tank in more spots than the 152. That's why I like it. I think this is a friendlier, more user-friendly tank than the 152. To use the 152 effectively, you need to understand the 152. You need to make sure that you, you understand its capabilities. Now we're going to show you two games in this tank. Um, both of these games are quite old, to be fair. Mainly because Wargaming took me by surprise when they released it. And because I'm not a contributor or a mainstream CC or a holder of a press account, I don't know when they're going to release the tanks. But I'd already had a look at this tank a long time ago. I did a review a while ago when it first hit the stores. And I thought, well, I might as well use that footage and do an updated review. Now, as I said, I actually like this tank. I think because of its fast reload, you can get more out of it than a 152. Okay, you're not going to be smacking anybody for the 900 on your HE or even 600 on your AP. But boy, you can have some fun in this thing. You put this thing in the right place and you really are a formidable target. I mean, you can just churn out shell after shell. I mean, that reload time is just amazing. It is quick. And you, you know, people look at you and they think you're a 152 and they think, oh, they've got, you know, 12, almost 13 seconds before you load. And they take them by surprise when you're doing it in nine seconds. I mean, it's just fanciful because that is an amazing reload time okay you've still got a russian gunner but in this tank he's far more awake 
the aim time is a lot nicer than the 152 so that reticle comes down a lot quicker and the gun seems to be slightly more accurate every now and then i mean you're still gonna get that russian gunner um, scenario whereby he decides to shoot it into a different map but look at that i mean you can just spin it round and boom okay so you still got pants armor and the is was still able to get one in and as i said you still got a russian gunner who decides he doesn't want to play the same game as you when he when he likes it but look at the reload on this thing i'm gonna out reload him and he's gone i mean this is why i like the tank and on this thing you can average around and i average around 2500 damage because of that reload it churns those shells out beautifully it's got better mobility slightly than the 152 and it's got a better camo value stationary than the 152 but as i say the big talking point is that gun i'm not knocking out the same amount of damage as the 152 but with the 152 you are vulnerable a lot of the time because of that reload time whereas this you're not as vulnerable because of your reload time being much much better so what you sacrifice in damage you're actually getting back in a faster reload and that's what makes this tank stand out now I like the 152, don't get me wrong, I think it's a fantastic tank, it's a beautiful tank, but I also like this tank, and a lot of people disagree with me on this, I actually prefer rolling out in this tank than I do in the 152, the reason being is because as I said, I find this one more user friendly, I find this one a lot easier to get on with, and I like that, and we get a nice first class there, and um, we do 2860 damage this is the last game and this is where it really shows you what you can do in this tank it's a supremacy game as you can see they're already taking the sea cap i'm around the sea cap i've got four three tanks sorry rolling up there's another 130 over there there's an is2 1945 over there I, um, there's a AMX and there's a Centurion so there is actually four tanks in and around the sea cap I don't want to push I mean if I push boy I'm gonna get shot to bits because like the 152 this thing also has relatively pants armor in fact this has worse armor than the 152 but watch this boom 480 straight into him Okay, he's hit me for 300 back, but I've knocked him for 480. And I'm going to sit here with my reload time. I'm going to out reload him, smack him again for another 400 and move away. So in two rounds, I've now done 900. I didn't get the kill, but that's 900 in the space of time it takes for you to churn out 600 in the 152. There's a 130. Boom, he's gone. 400 straight into him. I've now done 1,000. 300 damage in the space of three rounds there we go set him on fire boom he's gone now i'm up to 2000 and because of the reload on this thing boy you can do this there's another 130 can i get around the corner before he reloads no he's gone back down but he's not gonna hurt me unless i unless he ammo racks me so i can push on him i think push on him and get rid oh he's turned his back to me easy kill now we we're up to just over 2,000 damage, and we've got three kills. This is nice. This is why I like this tank. Hello, AMX. Should have loaded HE. Didn't bother. Why? Well, you never know if you were going to sort of low roll him. But we take him out eventually anyway. We're now up to 2,800 damage. Kill number four. The mobility, because of that lower armor, really helps you, and that's what you can do in this thing close to 3000 damage we do we get a load of credits we killed four tanks and we get a mastery that's why i like this tank do i think it's worth the money well i think it's a reasonable price but it's up to you guys i mean it's your gold not mine it's equivalent to i don't know 20 dollars what's that on it at the moment it's about 16 pounds 18 euros so it ain't cheap 
but it is a tier 8 and it's a lot cheaper than the Scorpion G which is also a tier 8 that hit the stalls recently. It may seem it, that it's still a bit pricey. I mean, $20 for a tank that effectively is similar to a tech tree tank, albeit with lower damage output. But it's a nice tank. If you've got the 152 already, I would urge you to possibly hold fire. You may be able to get this tank a lot cheaper when it comes around again. If you're going to buy it, I would strongly urge you to consider getting the double package where you get two tanks effectively for almost the price of one tank. I mean, it's an extra $5 really for another tank. So if you go for the 10,500 package, you're getting the tanks for $12 each effectively, well, $12.5 each, which isn't a bad price for that bundle. So I would urge you to consider the double bundle rather than the single bundle because it makes more sense and it's more cost effective anyway that has been the isu 130 it is currently in the stores it's worth a look as i say but it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea i've been fujit um, i hope that's giving you some something to think about some food for thought so to speak by all means comment and all the other stuff below if you haven't already, please press that subscribe button. It's a nice thing to do and it makes me happy and it effectively costs you nothing to do. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or you can join my Discord server where you can upload them a lot easier. I can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you're that way inclined and now Instagram. And until the next time, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because you know, that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.